Um, hi everyone. Um, so I think I'm recording now. Um, let me see. Cool. Hope everyone can uh, hear me. So the um, well, this is going to be a, a quick demo, although um, it may depend on the times because I want to wait until we can um, we can see a sync on on azure and it's um and it's probably going to be around maybe 10 past something like that um so um yeah so let's see if i have time to do the quick intro before that happens <laughs> um anyway and that's a random guess because i've been no writing down when it actually uh, did the sync and it's quite random uh, so if uh, a couple of planets align and then the moon as well it may it may happen but we'll see anyway i i reckon around 10 plus so let's see if i can go quickly through um the basics uh before that um so okay so scim is just basically a protocol that allows us to synchronize users and groups although at the moment we only support users and just a few features uh, from a, a identity provider uh, such as azure Alta, uh, <coughs> and so on uh, they, they may have an active directory with a uh, few users and we may want to synchronize those users with other applications uh, in this case is uh, gitlab um, it's a few requirements so at GitLab, we have um, the group SSO, and that needs to be configured um, first, uh, which is basically uh, these settings over here. We have um, these enabled. Um, I don't mind showing the fingerprints or anything, because this is just a, a one-off instance that I have anyway in DigitalOcean. Um, that needs to be configured then we have this feature flag uh, that hopefully in the future can be removed uh, but we need to um, enable it first um, and then there's this new configuration that unfortunately i think it just got merged on friday evening meaning that um i couldn't i couldn't um get a an image with this uh, to install in my instance so I don't have this final bit here, which is there just to generate the token, basically. Um, I already do, uh, have done that using the console. So it's missing here, but I manually do it. Uh, but in the future, we're going to have this. Um, hopefully in RC3, I think. Um, but uh, the rest is merge. And what we support at the moment is um, these three endpoints, create, update, and delete. The delete is, delete is the provision. Um, the configuration itself is yeah pretty straightforward. It's just uh, clicking on generate the SEM token, and then on Azure it gets a bit more complicated. Um, before I'm going to quickly show you that, and hopefully before the next sync happens. Um, so this is the provisioning tab which is where we configure all of that there's the sso tab here um, this is the the application that i install um, i'm using the um, um, group sso which basically um, if you go through that settings through those settings uh, which is it's not part of scim or anything it's just the normal group sso it basically uh, you basically end up configuring this this page here this single sign on and then after that, there's the provisioning tab, which is what the important bit here. Um, ah, we have bad luck because it just synced on O3 uh, again. Uh, that was a bit random. So O3, uh, <laughs> that was just 13 minutes. So hopefully, yeah, probably it's not going to sync again until 20 something. So we got, we got time uh, before we do some changes and then we see the syncing. Uh, which is what I wanted to show. Um, so the next thing is configuring Azure, uh, but before that, um, does uh, anyone have any any questions so far? I know I'm, 
I did, um, I did this a bit quick, so <laughs> let me know. Yeah, just one question. Um, so mm -hmm. this uh, screen you are showing now is is uh, is is the um, Azure portal. So when you sign up, mm -hmm. you get this screen, or or how do you get to this one? So yeah, that's a good question because it's not even easy to get here. <laughs> um, so basically, this is obviously the identity providers portal. In this case, it's Azure. And when you go to the portal itself, um, I think, um, well, there are some, some resources, I think, linked from the Group SSO page where, where you configure the Group SSO. Um, it tells you see your identity provider's documentation and there's this thing for azure and this is basically what i've done uh, and it guides you through that portal actually um blah 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 and you can see active directory so that is the thing you need um um active directory thingy and in here basically you need to create a new enterprise application um, all of that again is, is all is all in here, so I'm not gonna uh, yeah um, stay much longer here. But in enterprise applications, I already configure this one, which is GitHub test, and then there you go, you reach this um, this thing. There's obviously lots of tags, lots of links, so it's a bit it's a bit difficult. But I think as long as you follow the um, the documentation, then um, probably won't, won't get lost. <laughs> Does that answer your question there? Yeah, definitely. Thanks. No problem. Okay. Yeah, so, for the, sorry yeah. for, the, for the benefit of testing this. When others mm -hmm. test it in in future, obviously they might, might test with Azure or, or something else. Mm -hmm. Specifically for Azure, is there a cost associated with creating an enterprise application um, and sort of maintaining the test set of users? Yes. So um, I could only uh, have done this because I I requested like a trial and. I think it lasts like one month or two months, maybe. Um, and after that, I additionally requested through support that you know they extended my trial to continue testing this. And um, so, yeah, this is a cost associated. Obviously, not for me, but if you want to keep maintaining this, we we should probably um, um, have a proper account. I think we may have something already. I don't know, but I didn't I didn't ask because obviously um, um, it was just. Yeah, it was easy to set up for me just using the trial thing for now. Um, but yeah, we, we do need a we do need a, a proper account. Um, cool. So yeah, as I mentioned, there's the single sign-on page, and that documentation together with this will allow you to configure that. I won't yeah I won't uh, dig into this because it's, it's just it's not part of the uh, SCIM. But the provisioning link it is um and in here uh we have uh sorry this is the api configuring gitlab and then configuring uh sorry uh let's see um, if the top button goes i can click on it uh, maybe this bit um Configuration Azure. Yeah, so there's a few things to do here um, once we have the token from GitLab. Um, we have to configure the provisioning and the mapping. Um, basically, we have to enter the admin credentials, which GitLab already gives you. So it gives you this URL and the token, basically. Uh, then we can click on test connection to see if that is working. And if you set up, then you say, yeah, it's authorized, blah, blah, blah. And that's good. Um, then this is important because if anything fails, then it will send you an email there. And, and this is important for the cases when we have an error or a timeout, something doesn't respond, like GitLab is down or something, then we will receive a notification there. Um, I think 
that's pretty much it for the admin details. Then we have the mappings, and this is a bit tricky, but um, once we click here, we now that we implemented this, these three endpoints and the API, uh, which is here, so we have a way to get a list of SAML users. We can get a single SAML user, um, create a new user, and update, and then remove. Um, this is not being used by Azure because we do an update with the um, with an attribute which is active. Um, identity removal if active is false. Um, what Azure does is normally you set this to false and then normally we just get rid of the user straight away. We remove the identity and remove the, um, the group membership. Uh, while Azure then waits one month until it sends a delete, which for us is not useful, but it's already implemented. So if, it, if the user is still there, it will, it will do the same thing as we do when we receive the active flag to, uh, as false. It will um, just uh, get rid of the membership and delete the identity so they couldn't sign in using SSO. Um, so uh, back to the configuration, the mapping. Um, yeah, this is basically, we have a few, a few objects here and this is how, um, this is the, well, the name of the attributes as Azure names them, like object ID, blah, blah, blah. And then this is the mapping that we need to use for us. Uh, some of them are really following the SCIM protocol, like emails, type, blah, 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 work. That has to be like that if we want to follow it strictly. Um, and there's a few things here that um, I change, mainly the object ID set to the ID, which is the, um, um, the object ID, is an UID that Azure generates and is unique. Uh, and that identifies the user and it's also the same as the extern UAD, uh, which we have in yeah, maybe extern. Well, I think we call it something else, name, name ID. Um, but this name ID essentially ends up as the external ID in GitLab. Um, the external ID is, is a field in the identity, external UID, um, and that's how we match the, the user basically. Um, so as long as that's set to the, then there's a, some small things that uh, we have to do. So we map the object ID as the ID, the external ID is the same. Um, this is because, <laughs> uh, this is a bit of a workaround because I had to map the external ID to, um, let's see here. Object ID to external ID again, because when we, um, when we update a user, when we um, get a user or query for users or delete a user, we always get the external ID as the ID, but, when we oh, let me click on the three tabs. Let's see, yeah, in here. When we actually create the um, the user, for some reason it doesn't pass the ID. Um, so I had to pass the external ID to know that uh, beforehand. Um, even though in the mappings, and I'm going to show you here. There's an advanced options here. We can click on edit attributes and you will see that it's primary and it's always required, but for some reason it doesn't send, uh, it doesn't get sent uh, with, um, with the create endpoint. So as a workaround, and this is something um, you need to take into account. I, I just pass the, I just duplicate that as the external ID basically. Uh, so I can, I can get that information from the create endpoint. Um, yeah, let me see the one thing. Um, provisioning. Well, that's pretty much it. But before, 
let me just double check when this was sync. So it says, let me refresh this actually. Um, on three, because I think it's about to be sync soon. And I want to do a few things first um, before that, which is in users and groups, we have one in there, which is Gen4 as a test. I'm going to remove that user, which basically means that um, in, uh, let's see, in GitLab at the moment, we have these members synced. Uh, Gen4 is user 4 there. Uh, so if I delete it, I would expect that to get removed with the next thing, within a sync in uh, GitLab. Um, so let me just remove that one, remove the assignment, and um, and I'm going to add users to to this group, which means that adding a user will sync the user. Uh, so that was user four, I think. I'm going to add user five, for example. Um, select assign. Okay, so we have a new user there, and we deleted one, uh, which means that in the next sync, we will see user five, and we won't see user four there if the sync goes goes well. And and we can then also look in the logs to see what happened, and and dig a bit more into this later. Um, but um, yeah, I just want to do this now because then when the sync happens, we can actually uh, see an action. Um, back to the configuring the provisioning. Um, let's see, uh, let's see what I miss. So the mapping is basically, at the moment, uh, we can't, it's pretty much the same as if the default from Azure, but there were a couple of changes that I mentioned um, to do with the object ID mainly, so we can, um, Pass the the ID, and we have that um, unique identifier. Uh, the other thing that um, I couldn't work around is when I um, yeah I edit a user. There's an email field, and um, it doesn't matter what I use here; it never gets synced. There's nothing getting passed as the email, even if the attribute is, is mapped here. So there's a mail attribute, uh, which um, I may not have it now, but um, that's because it doesn't work basically. So if I mapping type, if I add a new mapping, it's probably a mail one, and it should target um, email equals work, something like that. It's, it's already assigned, so it doesn't come up there. Uh, so that one is actually mapped to the, let me see, username somewhere. Um, yeah, user principal name. Um, and this is because as uh, lets you add um, an email field there. Well, it's not an email field, but it's just a username. Um, but um, that's the workaround now. So we can add the email there, and then it will um, it will get sync as the email because we need the email for uh, creating an account uh, in GitLab. And um, so let me just go back here. That would be this one, basically. Um, another thing we do is we pick the username for GitLab as the as this bit here. Um, and that's mapped here somewhere, here, mail nickname as the username, because we do, you need the uh, username as well. Um, so that's what we use, basically, this one. And it doesn't matter if, if this user is, user five is already, is existing already, because in, in GitLab we, we just um, add a new, a new number there until, until it finds something that is unique, basically. So there's no problem, really, as long as we have this populated. And this is mandatory anyway. So, um, yeah. And it's back to the attributes. That's pretty much it from here. Uh, basically, just a copy and paste of what I have in the documentation uh, somewhere 
here it's just this uh, and then we need to make sure that the id is required and is the primary obviously um, i think that's by default anyway um, then the last thing is just setting the uh, provisioning status to home so if we go back we save that then if you scroll down this has to be on and then we we want to sync only assign users and groups otherwise it will sync everything in the active directory and that would be too much normally um, because we are just uh, mapping a, a group um, another thing in mappings that is not here because i removed it this and this is synchronizing the users but there's another option to synchronize groups but we, we're not supporting that uh, but we could synchronize multiple groups as well um, so as long as this is on then should there be any errors it will probably show there um, and if everything is fine we'll tell you here we have synchronized four objects blah blah, blah top user and it will tell you when the last sync happened and when it was successful um, it's a bit of a guess when this happens yeah. but um, around about 20 minutes every 20 minutes uh, let me just uh, refresh that page and see if if it's the same so it's all three so hopefully it will happen before this meeting finishes anyway but um, yeah it yeah when that happens we'll see the all the requests here and um, i can show you some already anyway um, but um yeah, let me know if you have any questions so far. Uh, James, I have um, a question. So I guess the, mm -hmm. the get users request, I guess that supports pagination, which is determined by the SIM protocol. Um, in theory, yes, but it doesn't because we, we don't fully support um, those endpoints. So basically, um, the get a list of some users um, it only returns a single user at the moment based on the unique ID because the this is only used as part of the sync and what happens with Azure and this is something I don't know if other other identity providers do the same when they want to sync something but they will send us something like um, this uh, exactly like this basically because <laughs> this is what they send and then they say ID equals blah um because this is unique it will only show us one user so um yeah at the moment we we didn't we didn't implement pagination but um yeah it's not this is not useful um unless it's used as part of the sync basically so this this one and the single one um i needed to implement them because of the uh, syn synchronous thing um that, that makes sense i think that answers my next question well because i think i was um i guess what happens is the identity provider goes through all of its users and then for each one tries to make sure that they're they're synchronized so it doesn't mm -hmm. it doesn't come to gitlab and say give me a list of all of your users and then it kind of checks against um itself to, to see what happens so yeah that, that makes um that yeah makes sense to me yeah what, you know, score is the um, same. all right perfect mm -hmm. what happens or what's the behavior at the moment if the if the token was incorrect and um, obviously I guess it would return some sort of forbidden um, but what what's the behavior from the identity provider is that when they would send an email to say that there's been an issue or yeah and also I mean when you configure that um, there's a test connection so that will fail and actually I don't think it will let you save the page unless this passes um, so that that's what happened um, so if you click on test connection, see what it does as well. You can check here and it sends a get to users as well uh, with a filter, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah. And this is, always, this is always 200, even if there's no users or anything, because it, it follows the protocol. So it's not, yeah, it returns um, this, um, see? This response basically. So if there's no results, then would you say total results zero, and then it would this would be an empty array for resources. Um, let's see, all three. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's wait as well. See if this uh, synchronizes, but. Um, 
think that's probably pretty much it. Um, let me see. So yeah, these one, as I mentioned, well, the only tricky thing here is that we have a filter expression. And at the moment, we only support the equals uh, matcher because there's, there's, a, there's a bunch of them, basically. Uh, we can see them here as well in the protocol. Uh, but what is useful for us is the equals because that's being used as part of the sync uh, from Azure. Uh, but as you can see, there are loads of them. Um, and you can group and do other, other funny stuff in there. We don't support any of that. Um, but um, yeah, it's very basic at the moment, but it does allow you to do the basic thing, which is create and synchronize that user and then delete it, update it, and so on. Um, um, yeah, the same thing with the operations, with the update. Um, let me show you. Update a single summer user. We have, um, so this is just a patch to the endpoint with the group path and the ID. And there's a few options here, but they're all a JSON string. And you can see how one looks like, like this basically operations op add path is the field. And this is just a SEIM type field and formatted and the new value basically um, um, and again we don't support many but we support replacing that um, Ah, another useful thing is the um, body logs. Uh, when we click there, um, well, useful when it actually uh, syncs this properly, but it's, um, it hasn't been updated since 3.43, I don't know why. But um, this tells us what was happening. And for instance, uh, export success, this was before, uh, probably probably when we created the, was updated. So user blah, was updated in, um, in the app and modify properties. Um, I probably changed, oh, okay. So this was when I, before I was testing this, I was um, deleting the user. And what happens when you delete it, just pass the active flag to false. And so this is what happened. And this is practically what we'll see um, as well um, after, after the next sync. Um, although I can probably show you here because there's a bit of a delay as you can see. And the last one was um, was that. Um, okay. Input one. Um, yeah, there's a few uses that when they get deleted, um, the Azure, well, Azure still tries to sync them uh, as to see what, what happened to these users. Is this back alive or is it actually deleted? And there's a few. A few that say import that like this that well it wasn't found basically so we return uh, not a 404 we we return an actual Azure um, not Azure uh, an actual SCIM response uh, saying that we can find this user um, this one was a sex a success so this is the ID and it was retrieved and um, user five was there so and it was active. Um, so these are quite useful, especially to debug what's going on. Uh, and normally, if something happens, uh, you will see an error there instead of success. And and the good thing is that you can see here the reason you will see the uh, response from from us from GitLab saying, "Hey, uh, maybe uh, the email is not unique, for instance, so that would um, throw um, a conflict error, or or something else happened." Then uh, it will it will. Um, it will tell you there exactly what happened. Um, let me go back to provisioning and see if this has been sync or free. Okay. Taking some time. Yay, 29. Okay. So 
let's see. Um, yeah, we can see that something happened there, but before I dig into that, let me quickly show you this. So we had this user, user four, that was there, and we added a new one, user five. So if I refresh this page, yeah, there were no errors, hopefully, but there might be. <laughs> um, oh, I know what happened. Mm. Well, that's good because we could show the error anyway. So that user got deleted, but the other one didn't because I um, that user was was still existing basically. I think I added it first and then um, I deleted it, but from just from just the identity and the membership. But the user itself was existed, was existing. So um, and I forgot to delete it. But let me see if that will happen anyway. So. Um, but actually, let's check. Uh, we can see the logs because there's a delay. Let's see if we're lucky enough. An error has occurred. Well, we will see. Um, the error details are not helpful, never. So we need to think into the um, into this. Actually, it did sync here. Yeah. So let's see. Failure. This one. Well, it was useful anyway. Fail to create user five and conflict, which is what I assume. And this is our response, error saving user, email has already been taken. Um, so, and that was the problem there um, because the user still assisted with that email and the email has to be um, unique. Um, but um, let's see what happened in GitLab itself. And um, I'm just uh, over the uh, half past, but uh, I'll do this quickly. So if L square is this with this, okay, that product one is known. Let's see. It tries to find this user here. Okay, this is the one. So, and this was probably a 200, but we say, hey, it doesn't exist. Um, then, Oh, hold on, this is a patch. No, this is the post. No, this is the wrong one, actually. This is the one that responds with, the, oh, okay. Yeah, Cause we're not querying the, um, we're getting a single user. So that responds with the 404. Let's see. Yeah, there, that's the one. So when we added the new user, user five, um, we, so the, the sync, queries for that user and it says, well, it doesn't exist. And then um, you can see here, queries the users, this is a 200, but it does the ID equals blah. And then the next thing, because it doesn't exist, it does the post here. Uh, and it responds with a 409, because in this case, um, the, the user existed already with, the, um, with this email. Um, then, I think, let me see if there's an active, you know. Yeah, and we also deleted one user, which is user four, and is this, this one over here. And we can see that it sends the active flag to false, and, and that's what happened there when we deleted it. So it's no longer there. Um, okay, I think that's pretty much it. I know I rushed a bit there, but um, let me know if you've had any, any any questions? Um, James, I found that really useful. Thank you. Um, one very quick question. I don't know if um, it'll be a quick answer. In, in this scenario, are we basically syncing in all users from Azure across to GitLab? And is there any way to kind of like tag certain users as having the GitLab role or permission mm -hmm. so that it would only um, sync those users? Well, um, here's the thing we, we don't support roles as in, well, there's a role um, attribute uh, in SCIM, um, but we don't support them as in um, GitLab um, permissions like this. So we, we're not mapping, we just create them with a default of guest. Uh, so we don't map the role, but we it can be used to um, only map certain users. Let me just show you quickly. So if we go to provisioning, um, so this is not mapping all 
Active Directory. It just map, it's just mapping these groups because this is not the whole Active Directory. The whole Active Directory has got more users. Uh, and I can show you maybe here. So if I click on users, there's a bunch there, but we only we have to explicitly add them to this group. So that's one thing. Um, and the other thing is that in provisioning, um, there's an option to, let me see, I think it could be here. Uh, maybe, I'm not sure, but there was an option to map. Um, no, it wasn't there. Synchronize source object. Uh, oh, there you go, that's the one. Scope. So we can add a scope there and only uh, maybe check the role or something, um, or check some sets and attributes and only map those that match those attributes basically. Um, so that can be configurable as well, uh, even within the group. Um, cool. Um, any more questions? Okay, well, thanks very much. And yeah, let me know if you have any, any other questions you can uh, post it in, in the um, managed channel. Uh, thanks a lot. Have a good day. Thanks, James.